Montgomery County is a small, wealthy suburb 50 miles north of Washington, D.C. Until eight weeks ago, it had an annual homicide rate of 15 to 20 murders a year. But this October, everything changed. A beautiful evening, um, very well lit, crowded parking lot. Anytime after five o'clock, people are coming to buy their groceries post work, um, and it was just a, sort of a normal day. One of the cashiers there, she'd been standing doing her job, and a bullet had come she had, it, close by her head. 40 minutes later that Wednesday evening, there was another shooting. A man walking across a busy supermarket car park was shot in the back and killed. Police were unnerved by the random murder and the skill of the executioner. I didn't delve into a lot of detail, but it did seem strange that we didn't have a lot of evidence. So we didn't really anticipate the uh, Thursday morning. Seven forty-one. I got a page that said a man had been killed on a lawnmower. The lawnmower had exploded. Was how it actually came across the page. I thought that was very unusual. James Buchanan, a gardener, was shot in the back and killed whilst mowing a customer's lawn. But the pages were coming through fairly quickly, so I get a page. There's been a shooting at the mobile station. Then, 31 minutes later, Prem Kumar Walakar, a taxi driver, was killed by a single gunshot to the chest. Maybe it's a terrorist. For real. I mean, you know, no, they haven't ruled it in or out. I mean, it, it could be the new wave of terrorism. What better way to terrorize a neighborhood than to start killing people at random in different places, all within a given you know, area? 25 minutes later, outside a post office, Sarah Ramos was sitting reading on a bench. She was killed by a bullet to the head. It was like it was a ghost, moving methodically through the county, shooting at people indiscriminately. And it was, we couldn't proactively get in front of what he was doing. It's like we we're always moving behind. He lives right in this area somewhere. He's too familiar with it. He lives right around here. I don't know if he's on foot at this point or what, but uh, he's really sick. Evil. For a lot of people, it just kind of said everyone's at risk. From a historical context, generally serial killers go at a much different pace. Chief Moose and I looked at each other. We looked at each other such as, God, please don't let it be another one. An hour and 20 minutes later, another shooting. Laurie Ann Lewis Rivera, a child carer, was shot in the back and killed whilst vacuuming out her people carrier. Committed Montgomery County Police Chief Charles Moose had headed some major cases in his time but he had never handled anything of this magnitude before. Nothing like this has ever happened in Montgomery County. Uh, this is a very safe community. Uh, our homicide rate just increased by 25% in one day. Captain Nancy Demi had been in her job working alongside Chief Moose for only three weeks when the killing started. You don't know any more except for that there are various genders, races, ages um, that are of individuals that have been victims of shootings. That's what we have right now. But all anybody could do at that time was confirm. 
confirm that we had a victim, confirm that they were shot, confirm that we had witnesses to the victims falling. But that's, that doesn't help the public. That doesn't even help the police. Chief Moose put all 1,100 Montgomery County police officers on high alert. It just seemed as though the shootings were going to never stop. It wasn't clear, you know, where and when the next strike would be. Everyone was at risk. These murders had something to do with everyone because they were just people just doing ordinary things and they lost their life because of it. Doug Duncan, the mayor of Montgomery County and Moose's boss, was identified as being a potential target for the sniper. He was assigned armed bodyguards as protection. You don't know what the history of the person is. You don't know who's doing it. You don't know if are they living in your community. Did they grow up in your community? We did know. And that's why uh, there was such fear here. We held our breath, hoping someone else wouldn't be shot. And you sort of wait minute by minute, half hour by half hour, hour by hour. If he can elude for about 400, 500 cops at a time, uh, and there's only one person or two people. That's kind of scary. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, then it's your time. You know, I think he's planned it. This area, this location, and whoever walks through. That night, Levels of fear in the community rocketed when the sniper moved unexpectedly away from Montgomery County and into the American capital. The sniper's sixth victim, 72-year-old Pascal Charlot, was shot and killed as he crossed a busy Washington, D.C. street. I've seen gunshot wounds, uh, you know, regarding hunting situations, uh, and this, this, it looked very similar. I've also seen gunshot wounds in the district that have happened with pistols. I just knew it looked different. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I couldn't really tell if he was going to make it or not. Um, but from what I saw, it was, it was pretty devastating. And this individual is still out there. We don't know where this person is. Just as a regular citizen, as a police officer, as anybody who lives in this country, is okay, it's devastating to think that this can happen. Chief Moose, he goes, you might as well get ready. This is going to be, this is going to be a long couple days. Um, and when we left that night, I remember he said, get some sleep, get it quick, because I don't know how much more you're going to get. As the Thursday came to a close, Chief Moose and his force had been left to chase a trail of death with few substantive clues. Police thought the sniper was using a high-powered rifle, but the only evidence they had was bullet fragments retrieved from the victims' bodies. On Friday morning, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, the ATF, confirmed that all the victims had been killed by the same gun. The round being used, the, the type of ammunition, was in the 22 caliber family, meaning the head of the bullet, the projectile that leaves the bullet, um, was the diameter of a 22 caliber rifle. It is uh, a pretty damaging round, high velocity, 3,000 feet per second. So, again, it, you won't even know. You're already hit before you, you hear the sound. And this is the 223. It's a significantly larger, just to give you an idea, 
with the 9mm on your left, the 40 caliber in the center, and the 223 round on the right. And almost counterintuitively, the police use these two rounds, which are actually much heavier in terms of the projectile than the 223. The big difference is the speed at which these rounds travel. These rounds are down around 1,500 feet per second, where this round can be anywhere between 3,100 and 3,500 feet per second. The round is very devastating in terms of its speed, its impact, the damage it does. Uh, the best comparison I can give you is it's like the wake of a boat. The faster it goes, the broader the wake behind it. This bullet does essentially the same thing. It enters with a very small hole, but just expands rapidly and does massive internal damage. Speculation was widespread on the sniper's identity. Was he Al-Qaeda, a rogue French Foreign Legion soldier, or a local resident determined to terrorize his neighborhood? Then the mysterious killer struck for the seventh time, 100 miles south of Montgomery County in Virginia. A woman was shot in a car park. The bullet passed through the open door of her vehicle before piercing her side. Miraculously, she survived. The killer had crossed state lines, and Chief Moose's sniper investigation was no longer solely a local matter. 50 FBI investigators joined the 100-strong Montgomery County detectives to work on the case. The sniper killings had become big news, and the mighty U.S. networks joined local stations outside Montgomery County Police Headquarters. The sniper killings had made the county infamous and its police chief an unwilling celebrity. Working 19-hour days, Chief Moose and Mayor Duncan prepared for the week to come. They agreed that schools would remain open. Early on Monday morning, Moose spoke out to reassure the public. Very clearly, we are at a level of anxiety with our morning rush hour getting ready to start. I want to again report a regular, normal opening of school. We expect a regular school day. I'm never going to win Dad of the Year. I didn't do that really well. Um, I guess I got all wrapped up in some career thing or something, but between that and divorce, you know, I'm not. I'm not the dad of the year, but police officers, we're supposed to protect the children. To the WTOP newsroom. There has been a shooting at a school this morning. A child has been shot in front of the Benjamin Tasker. A 13-year-old boy had been hit by a single shot to the chest. He was critically injured. He was the sniper's second survivor. Chief Moose was devastated. He was upset over a child being hurt in general, but then over the fact that his words may have been the catalyst that put that child in jeopardy or, or caused that situation to occur was a very heavy, heavy feeling for him. Someone is so mean-spirited that they shot a child. Now, all of our victims have been innocent, have been defenseless. But now we're stepping over the line because our children don't deserve this. So parents, please do your job tonight. Engage your children. Be there for them. We're going to need it. We're going to need you to support them. But stepping over the line, shooting a kid, I guess it's getting to be really, really personal now. So if there's any doubt out there, what law enforcement is going to be engaged in, what we're going to be doing, then you can remove all doubt. Now police felt the sniper was not only watching, but possibly reacting to their every word. A child, defenseless, hunt down.